it's a wonderful passage of scripture within its context. The people of Israel had in the time of Cyrus, after the Babylonian exile, by open doors provided by God, in the time of Cyrus, groups of people had come back to inhabit the area of Judah and uh, Jerusalem, including eventually, it took a while for this to happen, but they built a new temple area. And as I mentioned before, in the original temple, uh, storehouses have provi been provided in the uh, time of uh, Hezekiah. What happens here is that these people are still negligent about getting their hearts back to God. Even though God has restored them, he is not consuming them. He's helping them to patiently to get back on track. And God is pointing out, this is one of the areas in which you need to get back on track with your tithes and your offerings. Uh, they did have some, uh, some hardships at this time. Maybe they felt like they... Uh, they couldn't afford to uh, practice what God had commanded. And they were giving inferior things like animals, uh, which were worthless. That's talked about in another part of the book of Malachi. But anyway, God reproves them as the nation of Israel, the restored nation of Israel after the time of the Babylonian captivity. Uh, you know, you could we could read it in Nehemiah 13. He's talking about the same context there. But it's a context that is pertinent to Israel. They had robbed God by failing to practice that which was prescribed by the law of Moses, which was to provide crops and animals for the storehouses of the temple in Jerusalem. This being the second temple already the restored temple, you know, after the the temple had been destroyed uh, when you know, Babylonia defeated uh, Jerusalem in 587, about that time, approximately 587 B.C. Right, and there's the uh, Nehemiah uh, 13, is it? Chapter 13. Right. Uh, the parallel. So the same restoration of the temple service of the newly constructed temple in Jerusalem talked about in Nehemiah is also pertinent to Malachi's uh, chapter three process. If Christians are ne neglecting their tithes, they would be neglecting to give to the Levites what is owed to the Levites. And that has nothing to do with Christianity. There, uh, there are no group of people in the world today, as far as I know, who designate themselves as being the descendants of the Levites. So uh, this, once again, it is God addressing Israel in the times of Israel's responsibility to follow the law of Moses and the practice of tithing and, uh, you know, other types of giving other types of uh, things that Israelites were supposed to do uh, in this time. Yeah, mm -hmm. uh, I was going to ask, um, don't we? Don't you need a temple for the tithing system? But I think you said you, you necessarily you don't need the temple or? Uh... Yes, it, it, the temple service was required. Well, you know, after the transition from uh, the wilderness in the early uh, years, in Israel using the tabernacle uh, system of which the, the Levites were in charge. You had the, it's interesting, the Levites were to gather a tithe from the tithe they received in order to give to Aaron the priests. So they had a tithing responsibility within their receiving of the tithe. That's talking about in number, Numbers 18 as well. But uh, once there was no longer uh, a temple service available, the provision for Levites became obsolete for Israel, and it became obsolete for Christians once Jesus' sacrifice replaced the whole system of animal sacrifices. It's described so eloquently in the book of Hebrews.